Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulling Curls podcast. Today on episode 156, we are talking about why you might want an induction. Let's untangle it. Hi, I'm Hillary Erickson, the curly head behind the Pulling Curls podcast, Pregnancy and Parenting Untangled. There's no right answer for every family, but on this show, we hope to give you some ideas to make life simpler at your house. Life's tangled, just like my hair. Okay, I am super excited for today's guest. She is a certified nurse midwife. Now that is different than a lay midwife. And I know a lot of people get confused about that. So I'm going to put my post that explains the difference between the two in the show notes. But she's a certified nurse midwife in Pennsylvania. I want to introduce today's guest, Julie Pyle. Do you feel prepared for your delivery? In just three short hours, you can be prepared for the confident, collaborative delivery you want. You'll know what to expect and how to talk with your healthcare team. And there are no boring lessons in this class. I'll use humor, stories from my 20 years in the delivery room to engage both of you. I love how Alyssa told me that she found herself laughing at things that used to sound scary. Most of all, you guys are going to be on the same page from bump to bassinet. Join the online prenatal class for couples today. You can save 15% with coupon code UNTANGLED. You can find the link in the show notes. Hey, Julie, welcome to the Pulling Curls podcast. Hello, how are you? So good. I think this is such a great thing because I have so many early pregnancy moms who are like, I don't understand why you'd even want an induction, right? Yeah. The first visit we have with moms often, they're like, oh yeah, I definitely don't want to be induced ever. So it's always a conversation we have. Yeah. I was just talking to Julie and it's kind of like when you don't have a boyfriend and you're Christian and you're like, well, I'll never want to have sex before I get married. (laughs) Right. And then things change. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Things change. Okay. So let's talk about like why, because I think all these women see 39 week pregnant women who are like, I think I do want to be induced. And they're like, why on earth would you want to be induced? So what do you see in your practice, Julie? You know, most of the time, uh, people want to be induced for either scheduling reasons or because they're just sick of being pregnant. (laughs) So yeah, they just have a lot of discomfort. Things are not, you know, it's not happy at the last few weeks of pregnancy and they are just ready to have a baby. They want to, they want to have the end in sight. Yeah. And I will say, so I had two babies not induced and my third one, I got induced 12 days over. Thank you. Labor nurse going 12 days over, but it is so much easier (laughs) to schedule it because we didn't have family in town. So we were relying on friends to like, hopefully pick a kid. (laughs) So scheduling can be really an important factor when you have, or I've seen, you know, moms who have spouses in the military and they're home for two weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would hope all of us understand that we want dad to be there. That's an important part of labor as well. Yeah. I try and let, let my patients know that like there are some real reasons that scheduling is a big factor in the birth of a baby. You know, I have five children of my own and was induced with one and not the other four, but I remember the end of pregnancy, waking up every morning and thinking, well, I didn't have a baby last night, you know, (laughs) and then going to sleep that night and going, I didn't have a baby today. And you're just wondering when is this going to happen? Right. And it's hard on kids too. Like I had a, he was nine, eight, nine. And every night it was that question. Are you going to be here in the morning? who's taking me to school, you know, he feels that anxiety as well. So it's hard. Yeah, no, and none of us have the answer to that question. So my mom always thought I did. She's like, you do this for a living. And I was like, if I knew how mom, I would be so much richer. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And don't forget scheduling your doctor, because a lot of people are in big practices, you know, their doctor only covers call for one or two days a week, they may only want to be done by that doctor. And that's your choice. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, like we talked about family reasons are big child care, who's taking care of the other kids while you're having a baby, who's going to be in town, you know, military, certainly a big deal, or even just business, like some husbands, like they got to get back out on the road, or your own maternity leave, or your or your spouse's maternity leave, like you might need to try and plan that. So you get the most time off looking at you teachers, teachers, especially because they're like, it's spring break. <laughs> that, that makes sense to me. Like in, in the society we live in, like figuring out our lives ahead of time makes, makes a lot of sense for, for most of us. Yeah. 
Okay, let's go to the second one you mentioned, just being miserable. And it is, I never want to, you know, I encourage you guys to not get induced as much as I can, but it is miserable at the end. And when you see just like a whiff of Pitocin might just push you over the edge, it's tempting. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think you probably heard this phrase and sometimes we joke about T-O-B-P, tired of being pregnant. So we laugh about that as as midwives and doctors like, oh, this person's just T-O-B-P. But it's true because those aches and pains, your hips and your back and maybe you're contracting, but it's just not in, you're not in labor yet. You know, heartburn, gosh, everything contributes to just feeling kind of crummy. Yeah. Now we should say the, these two reasons that we just discussed, that's a 39 or after option, right? You Do you, do you induce anybody before 39 weeks anymore? Not for any of these reasons that we just discussed. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're talking to your older sisters or your mom, I mean, I had a doctor who tried to induce everyone at 35 weeks when I was probably eight years into my practice. <laughs> so that would have been that's probably why we have this new 39 week rule 2008, now. I think about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was like, I don't want them to deliver on the side of the road. I'm like, but 35 weeks, <laughs> probably not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, moms, sisters may have been induced before this, but anymore, they're really sticking to 39 weeks, both the hospital sticking to 39 weeks, like we ask the due date, we make sure that they're within the range, because some of our doctors like to slip it by and um, before we schedule them. Yeah, yep, absolutely. There, there's a couple checks and balances that way now, which you know, is better for a healthier moms, healthier baby kind of situation. Yeah. And now obviously there's other reasons why you might want to get induced and we're not going to talk about all those reasons, but you might have a medical reason and it may sort of be on the edge. So how do you counsel people with that? Like your blood pressures are high. I don't think it's like all the way high, you know? And so that can be really hard too, where it's kind of like, yeah, what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, there's a few different medical reasons, true medical reasons that have a pretty significant range. It might be a 10 day range. That's like, we should induce somewhere in this window. Uh, so deciding that can be a little bit of a discussion with your midwife, with your physician and your family, your spouse, whoever might be involved to figure out the best, you know, the best case for you individually. Yeah. So what comes into play with that? Obviously your cervical exam, they're probably going to want to check you and see what your cervix is doing. Cause if your cervix is closed, thick and high, that's going to be a long induction, sometimes necessary, right? Right. Yeah. It definitely is the cervix looking like it's ready for labor. Also, are we talking about just barely 37 weeks versus almost 39 weeks? Like that baby's going to going to have a different response to life after delivery if it's a little bit later. And then, you know, possibly like what the hospital census is like. Is it really, really busy? Do we have a, a spot where it's there's nothing going on that day that might make sense? You know, so there's a few things to consider. Yeah. And we should say that with the elective inductions where we were talking about. So an elective induction is just when it's an induction that you want versus a medically indicated would be one that we could do before 39 weeks. But the elective inductions go at the bottom of the line in the hospital. We obviously would take somebody who's got a medical reason to be induced ahead of that. So it's just not like reservations at a restaurant, sadly. I do try and really reiterate that when we talk about that with patients. It's like, we okay, we have you on for this day and time. However, if... The, the pregnant bus shows up and everybody in labor comes in or there's other medical reasons for people to be there, you're probably going to get postponed a little bit. Yeah. Or frankly, in this day and age, there is no staff. Or there's no staff. Absolutely. Because <laughs> yeah. you yep. got to have a nurse. We can't induce people without a nurse. Yep. You can try that at home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which probably hasn't worked before if we're having this conversation, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So making the decision, I, I think what we should from this from this episode is that it is a viable option. That a lot of people get their panties in a bunch, especially on TikTok, that you know, no one should be able to choose an induction. Like it shouldn't be a choice, only if it's like, you know, the life of the mom or the baby is in trouble. And I don't I don't agree with that. Where where do you stand, Julie? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, we don't live in in a world that that makes sense anymore, right? There's so many other factors in our life that we have to we have to talk about, we have to plan for. And I think on both ends, like somebody should not feel guilty if they really want to be induced and they really are tired of being pregnant. Like they should be like, this is my decision and it's okay. And on the other side, if somebody's reaching 42 weeks or, or whatever it may be, they should be supported in the decision to wait for labor to start on its own. So we really just have to be happy with our own decisions and our values with that and hopefully have a provider that is on board as well. And you have to listen to your provider because I didn't want to yeah. be induced so many tears, but I had had a nine pound baby last. I had a fourth degree tear. Like yeah. <laughs> there were all these reasons that she was like sat down. She like held my hands, Hillary, it's really time, you know, and I had to be open to that. Hillary wasn't in charge. That's sad. 
And that's, that's one of the most difficult things, right? In our brain is to not be in charge anymore. Yeah. Mm, and not in charge of your own body is hard. Okay, Julie, anything else you think people could learn about inductions? A quick tip about inductions? I think the reality is that people have to realize that an induction is is not going to look the same as natural labor. It's going to be different and you should anticipate, you know, bumps in the road or things you haven't thought of. And the length of time of inductions, we just can't anticipate how that might look. I've had plenty of people that the induction is way faster than any of their other labors and then vice versa where they think it's going to be fast and it's just not. So you have to take all of those things into consideration and really make the best informed choice for yourself. Yeah. We can, all we can do is make a guess off of all the other labors we've seen that had a similar cervix to you, but that's really all it is. That's really all medicine is just. (laughs) Yep. One of my favorite preceptors, one of her sayings she always said to me was, it's one of the 10 right ways to do things in in OB, which is so (laughs) true. And there's probably at least 10 different ways that people will induce a labor, you know, so it's not going to be the same for everybody in every place. Yeah. Great advice. All right. Thanks so much for coming on, Julie. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. I love that episode. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I think we need to support women in all their different kinds of labor choices. I see so many people out there who think there is only one way to give birth to a baby, but the best way is to take the advice of your provider and what's going on in your home life and decide what works for you. There are hard stops. Like we mentioned, like 39 weeks, we are not going to electively induce you. That's a hard stop at the hospital, you know, but after that, we've given you guys some leeway. And so I would just encourage you to take it and see what works best for your family. Now, if you guys are looking for more information on inductions, I have a whole mini class on what happens at an induction. It's cheap. It's available. Um, I will put it in the show notes if you're looking to just learn more about what happens at an induction to get prepared. Thanks so much for joining us on today's episode. The Pulling Curls podcast grows when you share us on social media or leave a review. If you do, please tag us so that we can share and send you a virtual hug, which frankly is my favorite kind of hugging. Until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day. (laughs) 